Social media has become the biggest way to get to the news. A lot of people use Twitter, YouTube, sometimes Mastodon, even Facebook or TikTok, really? And the cold hard reality of this is that none of these platforms are a good choice to get everything you're interested in. Which sucks because there is a much, much better way to read the news and that's RSS. So today we're going to answer a few questions. Why does social media suck for accessing the news? What is RSS? What exactly can you do with it? And who is our sponsor? Thanks to Tuxcare for sponsoring this video. Tuxcare offers solutions to automate and simplify the management of your Linux server and workstation fleet, including enterprise support for Alma Linux, extending support for end-of-life Linux distributions, and live patching. And on that specific topic, they'll host a webinar that will let you know what live patching is, how it works, and how it can help you protect your servers and computers without rebooting or any downtime. They'll go over how it works, the benefits you can derive from live patching your systems, and how to quickly implement such a solution in your organization. The webinar will be held on May the 17th. It will be led by two live patching and Linux security experts and will only take 30 minutes of your time. So if you're interested in automating your server security and limiting downtime, then register for the webinar using the link in the description below. And you'll also get a chance to win a floating Bluetooth speaker. So why does every social media platform suck for getting the news? The big main reason is that they were never designed for that. All the big social media platforms have one goal and one goal only, to keep you there for as long as they can, so they can show you ads and make more money. The catchier the content they show you, the more likely you are to stick around for just one more post and see just one more ad. So these algorithms aren't designed to get you every information you might want to be made aware of. They are designed to show you what they think you will engage with. And this creates a lot of noise. Tweets that were liked by someone you follow, popular posts, recommended videos. These aren't things you picked. They're things the algorithm wants you to see. On the big social media platforms, you don't control what you're looking at. You guide it by subscribing, following, liking, and favoriting, and every other weird name that they use to describe the exact same thing. On top of that, things you are subscribed to might also never be shown to you. The YouTube subscription feed doesn't show you every new video from every channel you subscribe to. Facebook posts and tweets all have lower than 100% impressions, which means these platforms don't show your posts to everyone who follows you. And all of that doesn't really apply to the Fediverse like Mastodon, PeerTube, PixelFed and the like. But they also have issues that make them unsuitable for the news and those issues are shared by every social network. You can't really archive, go back to all the things, search through what you archived, sort it in a specific way, create your own organization system. That's not what these things are made for. They are not libraries of things you like, they are not chronological archives. They are tools to see instantly available posts or videos, or tools to find entertainment. They are not designed to give you your own personal newspaper. They are designed to let you interact with other people through various forms of content. And that's why there's a much better solution for the news, and that's RSS. RSS is old tech. The current implementation of it, RSS2, dates from 2002, but it's still alive and well. RSS works with two components, an RSS feed reader and RSS feeds. Feeds are what you will subscribe to. They are just a simple file a lot of websites have that can be read by the feed reader, which will aggregate all these feeds in one place. Feeds contain all the articles or videos or posts from a source, and the reader will just display them in whatever order you choose. When a website publishes a new article or a YouTube channel has a new video, the feed updates and your feed reader gets the new stuff and displays it to you. It's very simple and very basic, but it has tons of advantages. 
First, you will only ever get what you subscribed to. There is no algorithm, no recommendations, no ads in between posts. You control what you see. Sure, there's still noise because not every article or video from a feed will interest you, but you still pick the sources of information. And you can add a lot of sources, websites, video channels, podcasts, social media accounts, and even newsletters. Second, all feed readers have organization capabilities. You can create folders to group your feeds in specific categories and only read the new stuff in that folder. You can have a folder for gaming-related news, a folder for tech news, a folder for finance, a folder for por po political stuff. Anything you like, really. Third, you can sort things to see the oldest first, the newest first from all your feeds at the same time or in a specific folder. Fourth, you can go back and search through older articles and actually find them. Or you can favorite them to get back to them when you want to. Fifth, you can navigate super easily from one article to the other. Most readers use the J and K keys to move to the next or previous article. So you can parse the title. If you're interested, you click it and read it or watch it. And if not, you just move on to the other. It's super efficient and very, very fast. And finally, it's portable. All readers will let you export and import your feed list. So you're not tied to a single application. If you don't like the one you're using, you can just move everything with you. And that list can also be hosted online, so it can be synced between devices. RSS just has so many advantages over social media for accessing the news. So hopefully, now that you're convinced it's great, let's see what it can do. RSS is all about adding sources or feeds to your reader. And you can add a lot of different things. And of course, the main thing will be articles from websites. A lot of websites will display a small orange square icon, which is the RSS logo. Sometimes it's not orange, sometimes it will look like a Wi-Fi icon. It's not really standardized. Clicking the icon will bring you to the feed or give you a URL you can copy. That's what you want to add in your feed reader. Adding that address to that reader will add that website as a source. And now you can browse all their articles. Simple enough, right? Now all you have to do is navigate to every single website you usually visit and repeat that exact process as many times as necessary. Yeah, getting set up with your first RSS feed list can be a little time consuming at first. But some websites don't have an RSS feed or an icon to access it. No matter, most RSS feed readers will let you add any website URL and automatically create an RSS feed for you. So all you have to do is copy-paste the website's URL or the address for a specific category in the website. But that's just for written articles. There is a lot more you can add. If you want to add videos from a YouTube channel, let's say a bearded French Linux content creator, most feed readers will also just let you copy-paste the channel's URL and add it as a feed. On Peertube, it's even easier. Just click the subscribe button and you get the ability to access the feed immediately. Which means you can create your own video subscription page, which aggregates all the creators you follow on all the platforms you use, and they will definitely show you every single video from every single creator you follow, which is better than YouTube. You can even add social media posts if you really want to. Using rss.app, you can just copy-paste a social media profile in there and it will spit out an RSS feed you can add to your reader. It works for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and a lot more. And of course, don't add every person you follow to your RSS feed reader. That's just going to pollute your newsfeed. And you can also add podcasts, which will all have an RSS feed you can add to your reader. Like, for example, this amazing Linux and open source news podcast that I make every week. If you're really into RSS, you can also add newsletters. Using the website killthenewsletter.com, you can generate an email address and a feed. Subscribe to the newsletter using the provided email address, which will never be linked to your own inbox and add the feed to your reader. Et voila, the newsletter will never crowd your real email address and you can still read it if you're interested, straight from your RSS reader. You can also use Kill the Newsletter for various email alerts, 
like newly available real estate listings that interest you, job offers, price drops for stuff you want to buy. Just use the email address from Kill the Newsletter to subscribe to these alerts and you're done. So now that we've established that RSS is awesome and super powerful, let's see how you can get started. The first thing you'll need to pick is obviously an RSS reader and you have tons of choice. The most used one for a time was Google Reader, but they killed it years ago. One of the early adopters of the mass grave for Google products. The thing you choose will depend on your use case. Do you read the news on a single device, like your computer, your tablet, or your phone, or do you want a solution that syncs your feeds and what you've read and your favorites between various devices? If you want a single device solution, it's very easy. On Linux, Newsflash is the one I use. It's a GNOME app, it looks great, it lets you customize how you want to sort items, how you want to display them, you can read the content or watch the video straight from the app, or you can open the website. It is a great solution. I don't use Windows or Mac OS, so I can't recommend anything specific for these operating systems. But some web browsers will have an integrated feed reader like Opera or Vivaldi, and Mozilla Thunderbird also has these capabilities. Now, if what you want is a cross-device solution, you also have plenty of options. And if you want the simplest one, Feedly is a good bet. You can create a free account, add up to 100 different feeds, create a few folders, and if you want to go over that, they have paid plans, and they have mobile apps and a web interface on PC. There's also Newsblur, which does the same thing and is open source but the free version limits you to 64 feeds. And of course, if you don't want to pay and you plan to add a lot of new sources, you can turn to self-hosting. The solution I use is Nextcloud News and obviously you'll need a Nextcloud server to make that work. Nextcloud News gives you a feed reader as a web app, but the feed list you've built with it can also be accessed by third-party clients if you want. Newsflash, the Linux app I talked about, has that capability. You can just add your Nextcloud account to it and everything will be synced. You can also use various mobile apps for iOS and Android to access these feeds, like Next News on iOS or Nextcloud News on Android. If setting up a whole Nextcloud server for just an RSS reader is a bit much though, you can also self-host Newsblur and access it from the web or the mobile apps for iOS and Android. The self-hosted version doesn't have a limit on the feed number. There's also Tiny Tiny RSS that you can also self-host and access using the official Android app or the unofficial Tiny Reader RSS app for iOS. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will recommend solutions in the comments as well. So check that out if you want to try out other clients or other feed sources or other readers. Now for reading, watching and listening to what you're interested in, RSS is still the best option out there. Sure, it takes a bit more time to set it up and to add all the feeds you want, but that's a first time thing. Once that's in place, you will actually save a lot of time by having everything in one place, being able to organize everything the way you like it and avoiding the noise that social media platforms add. If you value your time and you want to stay in control of what you see, what you read, what you watch, RSS is the best option. I can't recommend this technology enough. Just like I can't recommend our sponsor enough. If you're a Linux user and you need to replace your computer, stop buying devices that were made to run Windows. Buy something that was designed to run Linux from today's sponsor, Tuxedo. They have a big range of devices and they ship to most countries in the world. Whether you need a laptop, a desktop, a NUC, whether you need something for gaming, something affordable, a workstation, they have everything. Every device is customizable and every laptop is openable, repairable and upgradable, including the battery, the RAM, the SSD and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo computer. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description below for LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, 
you know the drill. So, thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!